why there's so many peace loving people as well. But I'm laughing because I'm holding in my hand this little book. It's a wonderful little book and it's wonderfully named and it's called Oh My Testicles. A tale of <laughs> a tale of entanglement. I'm not sure if women are allowed to buy this book, you know. Can you imagine walking into into a store and going like, Can I get Oh My Testicles? And people are like, well, uh, but you're going to have to do it if you want to read about it, right? And the young man who wrote this book is Lyndon Batiste, who I'd like to welcome on the show. Hi, Lyndon. Hello, how are you? I'm, <laughs> I'm a lot better than I was five minutes ago. A Tale of Entanglement. Jump in. Just jump right in. Don't, don't damage your testicles. <laughs> just jump right in. <laughs> All right. This is, um, this is a true story. Mm -hmm. And it's a, a funny account of a guy who encounters something called testicular torsion. Torsion? Yes. You not torsion te not testicular contortion, but no. testicular torsion. What in the world is that? That's where um, your spermatic cord, it actually kinks like a hose. And um, because of that, blood supply doesn't go to the scrotum. So if blood doesn't go, you're on the risk of losing it. Okay. Yeah. And you don't want to lose your testicles. No, you don't want to lose your <laughs> And this, so you said... But you told me this is based on something that really happened. Yeah, it's a true story. Now, I always tell people at the end of the show, there is meaning in everything, open up. Now, out of everything that happens to us, any experience that happens to us, knowing not everybody's going to get a book out of it, but quite a lot of people get books out of things that happen to them. So talk to me about what, this experience, what led you then to decide, I have to write a book about this. Um, this book was written before 90 Days of Violence. Mm -hmm. It was actually written about two or three years ago. Right. And um, it began one night painting the room and taking a very careless lean against a ladder, which led to the entanglement. <laughs> and then from there, it, it was just downhill. It went to the general practitioner. He recognized it immediately. And then um, it led to Mount Hope Hospital, waiting there for about three to four hours, mm -hmm. and then it led to a private facility. Then, to which was an arm and a leg. Yeah, yeah, which was an arm and a leg, and a few other things, and. Um, but thank God, not the Tesla. <laughs> <laughs> well, we don't know about that yet. You have to read the book to find out. <laughs> and um, then it goes on to you know the Port of Spain General Hospital, so it. When I, when I came out of the hospital, I had two weeks at home recovering, and I decided to just document the story. Mm -hmm. But at the time, I was nowhere considering um, publishing that. I wasn't even considering publishing a book. 90 Days came out, and it's only about, probably about three months ago, I decided, you know what? I was rereading the manuscript, mm -hmm. and I was laughing at some parts of it. So it, it became funny. So I decided to launch it. No. Well, good. I'm, I'm glad you did, actually, and I can't wait to read it. And so it's like it's it's also insight into what seems to be a quite a dysfunction. What a lot of people say it, that our medical system in Trinidad and Tobago is dysfunctional. I mean, from the experience with this, would you say it's dysfunctional, or would you say it's just well, it's, some things work, some things not working? Um, well, I need to take that in stages. When I went to Mount Hope, mm -hmm. it clearly was dysfunctional. I mean, you're sitting down waiting there, you're, to how this works is within like six hours or so, you have like a 12% chance and then it, it keeps increasing of losing the testicle. Oh my God. And you sit down there waiting, you're in the, so I go into the waiting room a lot. And um, you know, at, at the time I was there, I'm sure there were about 40 people sit down waiting and you know, hoping that the next name calls and the address yes. system is yours. And that didn't work out. That never materialized into me going into... But I'm sorry, so they don't send someone around to like ask a preliminary questions to see who is suffering from what? Because I remember when my, my younger brother was mm -hmm. asthmatic. And so every time he had an episode and they went to casualty, well, he was always ushered in because apparently asthmatics have some kind of special dispensation right. because they could just stop beating and drop down and die. So they don't do, they don't have a system where they come, they ascertain who can wait who cannot wait and who needs it now, who can, you know, probably get it in the next two hours? Well, in the form you, you fill out on entry. Mm -hmm. um, you, you take, you state whether it's an emergency, whether it's something that's crucial. I don't know how I could gauge that. And then you carry to a nurse um, in the waiting area and the, there's supposed to be some line of um, communication that takes place between them and the doctor. Right. And you know, the unfortunate thing is, um, on Saturday night, I was I actually had to go to the hospital to visit someone, and 
you know, it's, it's the same process where people are sitting, they're waiting. There's, I mean, you have a lot of room there for human error rather than having some information system that the doctors could be checking. Mm -hmm. You don't need to register three or four times, you know, upon going to the hospital. So I, I never saw anyone in Mount Hope. Okay, well, what is the hope then for Oh My Testicles? Are you hoping it gets in the right hands, maybe the minister from the health ministry might want to get a copy uh, of it and try to ascertain some of the problems that they they need to deal with um it, it will be unfair of me to say that i had a really good time at border speed general hospital you know i i was actually quite surprised at the treatment the food so mom um, that was in in the urology ward mm -hmm. so, so i go into that as well but i think what's more important the message that i'm trying to spread is that you know the doctors that are involved in private health care mm -hmm. you have you have people suffering outside that might not be able to afford a, a four hundred dollar right. a seven hundred dollar admittance fee and seven hundred per night so i mean i i don't think you know the service to when you take this oath as the doctor that the should hippocratic oath. yeah the hippocratic oath that shouldn't take precedence um sorry money shouldn't take precedence so the book is actually dedicated to you know the valiant the valiant doctors that you know, the patients before my goodness the the pockets well who would have thought that this experience with your testicles i, I can't get enough <laughs> of saying that word i mean it's not every day i get to say testicles on the jp yeah it's a real taboo word for some <laughs> reason i always like clean word <laughs> who would have thought that you know this this story with your with your testicles this experience with your dare i say it again testicles would now produce itself in so timely a mm -hmm. fashion, seeing that there's all this talk right now with the the ethnic cleansing in the with people losing their jobs. Yeah. They say doctors are being are losing their jobs and everything. And what what I like about it is you know that it really is kind of being highlighted as somehow these poor doctors are now going to suffer because they're no longer working at the Port of Spain General Hospital. And I seem to remember that wait a minute Aren't these the same doctors who a couple of years ago, or was it just last year, who had purposely stopped working at the hospital, gone about their private business um, because they didn't need to work at the hospital, because they weren't getting enough money, and now it's being made to seem as if, okay, because now somebody else is saying we're not working at the hospital, it's, it's kind of like we're going to suffer, we're going to not be able to drive our BMWs, and we're right. not going to be... Because it really does call into question then about the, the issue of money, the private money that they're making in their private practices and the kind of work that is being put into that on patients and then what happens inside the hospital. And so what is going on in our nation right now? Yes, if there's a charge of discrimination, we should look at it. But also, we shouldn't just look at that. We should look at all of the other things involved with that. And I think that a book like this is really calling upon people to address all the the issues yeah I, said, the last time <laughs> i was in hospital but you know i can imagine what yeah. it was like for you because uh, i mean i go into like casualty mm. so and it's detailed and i could tell you that when i was there i only saw two um local two trinidadian doctors okay. one was a guy who had attended to me at the private uh -huh. facility and um one was another person i i knew but it was like Nigerian doctors, these yes. guys who are tall as lampposts <laughs> and big and they speak in really gruff voices and um, the, the Filipino nurses. Mm -hmm. So that was it. But I think we need to recall people who, you know, the talk of, because they're saying that there's a lot of incidents of injuries and stuff happening because of these, these foreign doctors. But we need to remember why the foreign doctors are here in the first place. They were brought in to try to fill the hole that was left by our own local doctor saying, you know what, we want more money, we're not going to get the money, bye-bye, mm -hmm. we have our private practices. And so what's going on, you hear the term, I know people, you've heard the term, it's like when you go to the emergency hospital in Trinidad and Tobago, it's like they have your balls in a sling. Where we have a, <laughs> <laughs> we have a gentleman here who kind of literally kind of had this situation and has written this book, and I always like to show you the covers of the book so you know what you're looking for when you go into the bookstore to ask for it, especially because you might not want to ask for it. I know some of you out there might have a 